Welcome to the new journey to paradise. My name is Michael and I'm the founder of Triple Grease and the Righteous Pass Movement Foundation. Welcome to our channel. And today in part 19, we will talk about something very interesting. We will talk about patterns in the Bible. But before we start, please subscribe, like, click the bell icon and share the videos with your friends and family. Also assist and support us with your financial donation or with your support in any other way by following the links in the description box below. We are very grateful for every donation that we receive so that we can then bring forth a new mission to Cambodia, can lift up the needy, can fulfill our requirements for new videos and can bring more teaching to YouTube. Thank you for all your help and support. Now in part 19 of the new journey to paradise, we talk about patterns. Let's talk about the number three first. The number three represents Trinity. Is there already a pattern in this number three and Trinity? I believe there is. Was it not written in the Bible somewhere that, that something in the Revelation, in the book of Revelation, there is something that was, is, and will become? Are that not already three patterns? Was, is, and will become? That is the pre, mid, and post. For example, tribulation or any other. Three parts. Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Does that not show us that in the end times the Holy Spirit will be poured out to all the people? Is that not also written in the Bible? Of course it is. So you see, you have your first pattern already here. Was, is, and will become. Pre, mid, and post. Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Revelation 4, 8. Now, is it not written in Ecclesiastes? that there is nothing new under the sun that does not fit together with was, is and will become? Yes, because the Bible is a book of patterns. And what you have seen before, written there in the time of Abraham or in the time of Moses, will repeat itself again, either to the times of Jesus and then to the end times where we are now. The book of pattern. Let's have a look at Abraham. So Abraham, was Abraham not the first Exodus? Now people say, how can you say Abraham was an Exodus? Has Jesus not told him to leave his old life behind and leave his old world behind and move out of the city that he was staying? and forsake everything and walk the path that the Lord has showed him? Yes, it was a clear exodus, a clear exodus pattern. And now the fantastic thing. And where did it end? Where, get it, where did it get the climax? Where did Abraham fulfill everything the Lord has asked him to do? At Mount Moriah. On that mountain, he wanted to sacrifice Isaac. And then the angel came to stop him, the angel of the Lord. Jesus, most likely. Michael, maybe. So, do we not see an exodus, a pattern? You come out of a place where you have lived before, you walk through a wilderness, and you come to a mountain where everything climaxes. Now, what is in the second exodus? Of course, we know Moses, the Israelites coming out of Egypt. And the climax is at Mount Sinai or Mount Horeb, whatever you want to say. A pattern. You see a pattern, right? This was the second. Now, what is the third? If we have one, we have two, then we also must have a third one. Because it's Trinity. It's the number three. And the third exodus is what we 
announce right now. The Remnant, coming out of the world in Babylon, moving on the path that the Lord has asked them to move forward into their purpose and destiny. And the climax will be at Mount Zion, the mountain not carved by human hands. The mountain that is described in Daniel that will come and destroy the feet of the statue so that it will fall. A mountain that will grow over the whole nations. That mountain, Mount Zion, the dwelling place of the Father. So we have a clear pattern here. And now another amazing thing is an exodus is like opening a door. Right? Now an opening of the door has a, some, a number associated to it in the Jewish alphabet. What is it? Dalet, the number four. So if Abraham was a person alone with his family walking, then he represents the number four, a single number, because he was small. And you will find that all the patterns in the Bible are coming from a very small unity unit to a much bigger unit in the second one and then to a, to the worldwide events in the third pattern now we see in the first pattern abraham is exodus number four then we come to the israelites coming out of egypt that is a much bigger group now we have a whole group of people hundred thousand of people this is now associated with the number 4-4. Four, four. And now we come to a worldwide event, the great exodus, the great harvest of the ages, where all the people will be gathered from all the corners of the earth. And they are associated with the number 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Have you ever seen the number 4-4-4? Four, four, four? Either on a clock, or anywhere, license plate or whatever, and this repeatedly, then you know where you belong to. Then you know that the Lord is calling you onto that path. 444 is a great exodus, is a Joel 2 army bringing in the great harvest, is the remnant moving towards Mount Zion. You see now a clear pattern from Abraham to Moses, now to the remnant and the Elijah spirit. So do we have another um, pattern? Let me look at my notes. What about Zion? The word Zion comes from where? Is it really that small hill that the Jews claim westwards from Jerusalem? How was Zion, the word used before. Zion was used for the city of David and represents in the pattern a fortress. The fortress of the Lord and will not be the Mount Zion that will be carved without hands, be the fortress of the Lord in this world from where he will rule and reign. Will not that be the mountain where he will take his, his people into paradise and where they will receive their mansions on that slope of that holy mountain? This is the fortress of the Lord. And that's the reason why it is called Zion. Because Zion is the city of David. And who is the son or the following in the lineage of David? Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And that's the reason why you will see in Revelation 14.4 that the, <clears throat> that the 144,000 are standing with Lord Jesus on Mount Zion. Because that is his fortress that he will place on this earth. And we will walk to that fortress, to the city of David. Another pattern. You see slowly by slowly that there are pattern, right? There are. So let's continue. What about the covenants? Is there also a pattern? What is the first covenant? I can see all the fingers going up. Everybody knows the first covenant that God did with his people in this world. 
This Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant, so that he will make his descendants in numbers as the stars in heaven. First covenant. Still small, one person, one family, Abraham and his family. The second bigger one. What is the second covenant? Fingers up. What are the second? Second covenant made at Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai with the Israelites, a much bigger group in the second Exodus, the second covenant. Now, what is the third one? Now everybody will say Jesus when he came. No. This is what we call the New Testament and New Covenant. That is not the covenant that was made. There will be another covenant coming up that will have relevance for the worldwide system that will be there. It will be done for Mount Zion in the last seven years, not by the Antichrist, but it will be done by Jesus Christ for Mount Zion. Another, the third covenant. And for Mount Zion, it will have relevance to the whole world. Not only to a small group, but the whole world will see Jesus on Mount Zion and they will receive the covenant that is made with many for one week, seven years. And in the middle of this seven years, it will be cut because he will cut himself off from Jerusalem at that time. And why will he cut himself off at this time? Read Daniel. Why? Because at this time, after there was war in heaven, Satan will come down onto the earth. But the time has not yet come for the showdown between Jesus and Satan. So he will cut himself off and give him this short time period that he has to rule this world. That's the reason why this seven year covenant will be broken into half and the daily sacrifice and the oblation will be taken away. Because on this Mount Zion there will be the new temple standing and there will be sacrifices done at that place. You might think, oh, this cannot be because everything is changed. Nothing is changed. You cannot replace the Old Testament with the new only because it fits your agenda. Everything that was established from the Father will remain. Jesus has always said that. Not a dot or tittle will be removed from the law. Nothing. It does not mean you have to be act like a Jew and fulfill Jewish rituals. Of course not. You are a Christian, hopefully. And you will walk in the way that Jesus has proclaimed it to you. But nothing will be removed from the law. No dot, no tittle. But the corporal punishment with, of death was removed through Jesus. The blood sacrifice was removed through Jesus and replaced with brotherly love and the love of the Father. Now, this was another pattern with the covenant. So what else have we? Oh, yes. What about the comparison Egypt and Zion? Was not already the Mount Sinai a kind of Mount Zion? A city where only Moses had access to go into? So also we will find it at Mount Zion, only that now the whole multitude in white will have access to the paradise. The next one, what about ascension? Pattern of ascension. Who was the first who ascended? to heaven in the fiery chariot. I see the fingers going up. I see them. I see them. Elijah. Very good. Perfect. The next one in the second pattern for a much bigger group. Jesus. Yes. Very good. And what is the third ascension for the world to see? The two witnesses. Read Revelation. They were killed, they lie three days on the, in the street of Jerusalem, and then they rise from the dead and are sent to heaven for all to see. Pattern over pattern over pattern. 
and always in three. Now, what about the remnant? If you're already in ascension, was there a remnant left at the time of Elijah? Hmm, good question, Michael. No? Yeah? What about the mantle of Elijah? He was thrown down to whom? Elisha. Elisha is a pattern of the remnant that is left behind after the ascension. And then Elijah walked in the double power of Elisha. Imagine the double power, much power, more powerful. So what happened at Jesus' times, Jesus' ascension? Was there anybody left behind? Yeah, of course, the apostles and disciples. And did they receive a mantle? Of course. The Holy Spirit, the fiery tongues came down at Pentecost. And they had the power, the double power, and they moved out into the nations speaking all types of worldly tongues and healing the sick, raising the dead. All this power was there. And what is the third pattern now? The two witnesses, the remnant, the Jews are there. But this could also be a little bit further because I don't believe that this ascension only refers to the two witnesses because we are then they're very far in the end times. I believe this ascension that we have to look for with the remnant is the ascension of the bride, the disappearance into the cloud of the bride. And then we have a remnant left behind who was not part of the bride. And this remnant will also receive power. Jesus has said, you will walk like me, but with much more power. And they will walk, and they will gather in the harvest. This is the third pattern for the ascension and the remnant. So, what about... What do we have? Let me have a look. Uh, mm -hmm. um, what about the city? Is there also a city pattern in the Bible? Let's have a look. What is the first major city mentioned in the Bible? Apart from, we are not talking about the negative side, not apart from Babylon, not that one. The, a holy city. It was the city of David, right? What will be the next? city that will be mentioned what will carry the same name as the city of david that will be zion zion will all will be the mountain but giant zion will also have the throne of glory and the holy place on top of it so another holy city that will be there and in the third pattern everybody will know at the end new jerusalem the holiest of holiest city will come down from heaven and a new earth and heaven will be established. So pattern over pattern and all in three. Yeah, left behind we had already Elijah, this one. What about people? Or, yeah, what, how will I call it? Elect ones, chosen ones. Chosen ones is a better word. What were the first chosen ones of the Lord, of God Almighty, of Yahweh? The Jews, the Israelites at Mount Zion. You are my chosen people. Right? First pattern. A smaller group. What are the next one? After the work of Jesus, after the cross, after the resurrection, and then when the apostles went into the nation to gather the harvest, what kind of people were brought together at that time? The Christians, the second chosen ones. And now what is the third pattern? In the millennium, we have all the people that will belong to the millennial reign of Christ will be now the chosen one at this time. Oh, by the way, people say, 
that the bread will be here on earth during the millennial reign. I have to disappoint you. Why should they come back from the third heaven? When is something coming back from the third heaven and come down onto the earth? When New Jerusalem comes down. And that is the time when the bride who will go first in the escape will then come back down to the earth. Because it is written that the bride will be a pillar in the house of the Lord in heaven. So they will come back with New Jerusalem. Because the bride will be taken out of harm completely. That also means they will not be here during the millennial reign. Because even during the millennial reign, there will be still bad people on earth. Only afterwards, when Satan was released again and has done his work and will be then put down forever, only then the bed will go into the, through the white throne judgment, into the lake of fire and the good for eternity. But during the millennial reign, we still have bad people on earth. And we still have stubborn nations on earth. We still have people that will not listen to Jesus on earth. Even if you cannot imagine this, but it will happen. People will still reject Jesus when he is still here, right in front of their face. They will do that. By the way, another pattern. To what? To the Pharisees who rejected Jesus, even when they had him direct in front of them. And in the same pattern, it will be rejected during the millennial reign. Patterns, patterns, patterns. So, what else do we have? We have, what about the 40 days? Tell the pattern, 40 days. 40 days before the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a pattern to something. I believe it is a pattern to 40 days of the, before the escape of the bride. What happened in this 40 days at Jesus' time? Jesus went forth and told his apostles and disciples that they have now to take over his work. And now I also believe that this is what the message of the bride is. It's what you see on YouTube in many places. Where people are calling for us to be holy. People are calling for us to be righteous. These are most likely people that will go in the escape and they have called out to the remnant now to change their life and to do even greater work by now collecting the harvest of the ages. ages. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, a very interesting pattern. What about uh, Egypt? Did the Israelites leave Egypt empty-handed? Is there not the story in the, in the Bible that the Israelites received gold and silver from the Egyptians before they left in the great ex in the Exodus? Of course. So is there a pattern to this one for the great Exodus now out of the world in Babylon? I believe so. What about the wells of the sinner? It is written that the wells of the sinner will be stored up for the righteous. Hmm. When is the time of the righteous? Oh, we return back to Daniel 12.3. When there you will find your job description and you will bring as many people as possible to righteousness. So the time of righteousness must be the time of harvest. Now, if the ways of the sinner is stored up for the righteous, then the ways of the sinner must be provided in a certain way <clears throat> for the great exodus, so that the great harvest can be brought in. Of course, the wealth is not there for you to make you rich and so that you live in luxury, because then you would have returned back into the world and into Babylon. No. The, the wealth of the sinner is there to advance societies of the rose, is there to gather in the harvest and to bring as many people to righteousness as possible. It is there to advance the kingdom. The kingdom of God unto the earth. But a pattern, nonetheless.
yeah, I think by now you will have seen that there are a lot of patterns in the Bible. A lot. If you just think about it and then read through the Bibles, you will find many, many more examples of patterns that we have not yet touched. Just read the Bible and then think, can that be a pattern? And how would it be when it, it was, is and will become? About the past, the present and the future. How will that play out? And then you will find an answer how the end times will unfold through the patterns that you will find in the Bible. Very great understanding about patterns. Everything is done in threes and everything is done in patterns. Unfortunately, this also applies to the negative side, to the dark side. And when we are talking about three, we have to acknowledge that we have World War I, World War II, and unfortunately, we will definitely see World War III. And these dark patterns are always there. And you can apply them to the dark forces in the same way, the fallen angels of paradise, and then another time, and then the end times again, and all are in pattern. So now you should read the Bible with, an, with, an, with your open eyes. You will have the understanding now about patterns. Read the Bible, all the verses, and then always have in your, in your mind, would that be a pattern? And if it's a pattern, then let me think how it was, is, and will be. And then you will get a much better and greater understanding what the Bible will teach you. I thank you that you are here with me for this part 19 of our new journey to paradise and the patterns. I hope it was interesting for you and I hope you have learned a little bit and that you can apply it now yourself when you read the next time the Bible. Please watch all our videos. We have so many videos up on our YouTube channel. And unfortunately, I can see that only very few people are coming. So please spread the news about the videos. Spread them to the people so that they come and watch them. There's a lot of understanding and knowledge in them. Also join our website Triple Grace at triple slash grace dot com. Become a member. Sign up for the newsletter. And or be there for the daily prophetic word, either on the website or on our YouTube channel. Please also watch my Great Exodus series that I will bring forth every day so that I can guide you more and more towards Mount Zion. Help us in any way you can, because what we are doing is a worldwide ministry and a worldwide mission to gather the people in the Great Harvest. So we need your help financially, because we cannot make it alone. So please open your heart, do an act of loving kindness, either at Patreon, or PayPal, or any other way that we offer. You will see all this in the description box below. Please also consider to purchase at Amazon the Book of Love, what is the standard literature of Triple Grace. It will help you to understand situation in this world better, so that you be able to overcome this situation and move out of the world and out of Babylon onto the new path. I thank you that you're here with me all the time, and I love you so dearly. May God bless you and your family abundantly. And I will see you again for part 20 that will come up also in the near future. Do not forget our daily prophetic words and the Great Exodus series that we produce daily. Become a patron of Triple Grace to see, to watch and see the mini series that we produce, ex, produce exclusively for Patreon. All is in the description box below. Use our resources at Triple Grace and become part of us. Walk with us together. The door is open in front of you. Just walk to, through it onto the narrow pass. And we all walk together in love, unity and support. Inequality. Thank you 
for your assistance, thank you for your support, and thank you for the love that you're sending me. And I will see you again in the next video. May God bless you and your family abundantly. Maranatha.